My Fonua placenta, buried in the by me dreaming of the Eora Nation, Sydney, Australia, nourishes my belonging to this land with my ancestral roots embedded in my island nation, the Kingdom of Tonga. Ha'afisi, Moha'amoa and Ha'ahavea are the clans I spawn from. They guide my existence. I call her the Xena of the South Pacific because she's very much a fighter um, and a creator in her own right. I think that Latai is a really strong performer and um, I think that her work should be in people's face. I think art needs to have a function and it needs to make strong statements. I often try to, to have a perspective that uh, represents a marginalised community. I, I don't know if it works all the time, but that's definitely what I aim for. Because of my own minority status, I like to try and build, construct something that may be of a perspective that's not necessarily known. For me, I think the great thing about Latai is that you first and foremost get to know her as a professional. And, uh, and uh, it's surprising because not only her, but her sister and that, uh, um, they, they are held in high esteem in the arts industry. And for me, I, I work a lot in the commercial side, so to be able to come to the creative side uh, was always a blessing and, and to meet another brown face. My earliest memory of working with Ladai was basically, I guess, as an audience member when she was five years old and um, my grandmother and all her women were dressing her uh, for a performance. And um, I guess my contribution was that she used my fabric that my grandmother had bought me. <laughs> I was only, I think I was two. When I make things, I'm interested in portraying a particular demographic in a particular way that we may not hear in mainstream media, we may not see in mainstream art. I don't like to make things that I don't know absolutely nothing about. These are the things that are important to me as an individual, so I think there might be others that it's important to, so that's where I think my, my energy should go to as an artist. At the moment, I'm really, really interested in climate change and the effects on, on the Pacific. And so that has inspired uh, one of my recent works. And the initial inspiration from that work was a, re a result of being a um, delegate for the United Nations Climate Change Conference in 2007 in Bali. I was a delegate there and I, you know, and I'd been uh, involved in a lot of talks and um, talking to a lot of people from different places about climate change and its effect. And this was, this was 10 days after Kevin Rudd was, was elected. So I met him and I met Peter Garrett in, in Bali and was really kind of annoyed at how Australia couldn't take responsibility for the demise of its neighbouring countries as a result of climate change and global warming. There also should be a place for anger and for much more oppositional practice. And of a practice that actually says, no, there are no pina coladas here, there are no grass skirts waving, there are no kind of uh, 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 welcoming kind of processes. Actually what we're saying is, act now, do something about it, or fuck off. Island Exiles came about as an idea that those of us who live in developed countries are really complacent about the effects it's having on other people. And our complacency, to me, seems like we're performing a water torture on, on a group of people who've not contributed anything to, to climate change. So it's a kind of a very literal, I guess, interpretation of the situation for her ancestral heritage, which is her physically being bound to the melting ice. And it was a painful process and she cried and wailed. She actually looked at me and the way that I, exp like the way that I explain that to other people is that it feels like a funeral, except when that person is looking at you. 
My mum and my brother didn't come, thank goodness. But at the same time, I think that's what my performance usually um, involves is a level of risk. That one in particular was quite confronting because I think um, it's a little bit like that when artists put themselves on the line that the people closest to them are often worrying about like the individual rather than the issue. It was one of those experiences that was very emotional for the people that were actually watching it as well and uh, it seemed to me that people actually really understood what she was trying to do without her having to declare um, her ideas in, in text. My family uh, first came to Australia three generations ago. Growing up in Australia is really a big question. I have very mixed feelings about growing up in Australia and then growing up in Marrickville. And although I really love Marrickville now, it, has, it was a very difficult place to grow up as well. I think as a person of colour, uh, growing up in Australia is, has always been and it still is really hard. A lot of the race politics that exist, you know, a lot of it is covert racism. But and as a young person, the a sense of otherisation was was quite prominent. Belong to the same time and place, I guess. Um, and so, marginalised communities is our world. My father died when I was was still in high school. So there were all these layers to the difficulties of growing up in a country where you're the minority. My dad was raising us in a way where we'd be prepared for a lot of the, the discrimination. He really taught uh, me and my siblings to question everything. It, it's not useful to anybody to if you stay silent. You know, you have to take a position, you have to speak up, you have to ask questions. And I think as an Australian who is a minority it leaves a lot of uh, space for questioning. It always comes back to what type of Australian I am and what type of Australia should I be supporting. It's not just about me, it's about my surroundings, my environment and how I'm contributing to that. She definitely is a voice um, that cannot be silenced, but also a creative, um, she's a creative a hum about herself that she just can't help but you know, um, not only create things, but also very much in, in, a, in a Polynesian fashion. I, I don't think I have an identity crisis or clash. Um, I know who I am. I'm very familiar with my heritage. I think that area where they meet is what's really interesting to me. There's no airs about her. What you see is what you get and it's normally loud and coming fast at you. I wouldn't say I'm inspired by the Australian social landscape. Um, I definitely respond to it, but I'm inspired by how I might take a cultural viewpoint and use that as a part of the process to make my work in a contemporary way or in a relevant way to say my community or the general public. Sideshow was a collaboration between Kathy Kogel and I, um, commissioned by Campbelltown Arts Centre, to make an intercultural dance work. Sideshow's comments on Australian identity and how we otherise those who don't fall into the dominant notion of what is Australian. We could use cultural objects and props to state very cleanly and quickly ideas around intercultural relationships. We looked at our similarities and that was that we were both women, we were both dancers and we were both first generation Australians. However, when we look closer, we are very, very different. And so we decided that what we'd make, um, and which is what Sideshow is, is a look at difference. 
highlighting difference rather than the approach of trying to homogenise ourselves to say, oh, we're the same, you know, we're not, we're different and there's no problem with being different. Pacific community is, is, is both an old community and new community in Australia. Current Pacific Island communities, I think, are not necessarily involved in the political realm in the country, which determines a lot of things for them. I think it's important for, for our communities to participate in the discourse not just the discourse but also lobbying, getting involved in bigger decisions that affect them. Making artwork is part of that, involving people or being involved in community projects that raise awareness around social political issues that involve Pacific people. I think we are the barkers. Uh, of our communities in which we stand at the door and go, hear ye, hear ye. I don't think that we can be the voice of our communities because then our people don't talk unless somebody, you know, the elders talk for them. And what we're trying to encourage our young people to do is to express their feelings, is to tell their stories. And I think that's the great thing about what I do, but also especially what Latai does because uh, she enables these these young people with stories to go, it's all right to tell your story. Your story is as good as Strictly Boru. Like any new emerging community, I think it's always difficult to do that. And so it is about consistently uh, engaging with them in that way. And those of us who've been here longer, it, I think it's, we have a responsibility to try and maintain that inclusion or raise awareness to some of the, the issues that our communities have. And what she places out there is something that not only the community can relate to, but it is something that they breathe life into. And so therefore there's an ongoing uh, um, life to this after her and I think that's the cleverness about it. I think what is really interesting over the last couple of years is she is kind of carving out a path for herself as a solo artist and I think that we're really supportive of that because I think that she's an incredibly powerful performer. Yeah, I guess something about the future is that the branch is growing and, and it's also this whole concept of um, when your work is your children this, this is the legacy that you're creating. I think that the colour of our skin is, is only a blessing for us and I think Latay is a great example of not making that excuse of, oh, I'm brown, so, you know, they only write for white, so, you know, I'm destined to do nothing. You know, her attitude is, this is my blessing and you haven't heard my story, so sit down and let me tell you a story and I think that's what's coming. Ofatu, one love. Peace and mangoes. Latai Funaki Tamwakao.